Hi, I'm Olivia Dreyer, the director of Karuna Center for Peacebuilding, a nonprofit in Amherst, Massachusetts, that was founded in 1994 by psychologist and peace activist Paula Green. Its mission is to address the wounds of war and promote reconciliation. Together with local partners, we engage former enemy groups in dialogue and joint activities that help them rebuild trust and rediscover their common humanity. To date, we have worked in some 30 war-torn countries. While the need for this work seems to be growing, we are heartened by the response and awed by the courage of local peace builders. Most of our programs are overseas, but we are increasingly leading dialogues here in the U.S. to help bridge our own growing divides. This series, Karuna in the World, aims to share insights into the work we do around the globe. Welcome to Karuna in the World. This is a program where we tell stories coming out of the work of Karuna Center for Peacebuilding. And this is our second program on Rwanda, so we're really happy to see those of you who are joining us for a second time. I'm Jenny Morrison, I'm the program manager, and I'm joined by the uh, project manager from Rwanda, Rosette Sevason, my friend and partner. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. So for those who didn't have a chance to join, just a quick orientation uh, about our first program. So we're talking about Rwanda, which many of you may know is an East African country with an amazing rich history and a really brutal, awful period that culminated in a genocide. It was 1994 at that point when the state, government, when the state mobilized more than 200,000 community members to kill and rape and mutilate their neighbors. It was done on what was an, thought to be an ethnic basis at that time. It's now government policy not to talk in those terms. But, um, but the Hutus were mobilized to kill their Tutsi neighbors, their Tutsi family members. Many families were left uh, with fewer people remaining than had died. So a really, really difficult period from which we've been emerging with a new government uh, that has been in place since, since that time almost. Uh, since 1995. Rosette was describing a number of the efforts that the newer government had put in place to help community come back together and to prevent that from ever happening again. And Karuna Center is one of many, many nonprofits that contribute to that healing as well. Um, so let's talk a bit more about the project that we work on together. Um, so there's actually four organizations involved, Karuna Center and three Rwandan organizations. So would you talk a bit about how that work looks? Our project name is Healing Our Communities, <laughs> Pro Promoting Social Cohesion in Rwanda. So this is in partnership with local partners. Um, we have ERDP, which is the Institute of Research and Dialogue. Um, and what they, are, they do on the field uh, with the communities, they normally form um, dialogue clubs. So those dialogue clubs, in, within the communities are just the, the, the people who live there without any discrimination with, from any background. So they are men and women. And, you know, uh, as um, I put it before, in Rwanda, uh, because of that genocide background, we have, you know, people, of course, from those different backgrounds, I mean, the survivors, so there are perpetrators, okay, who came in normal life, like they finished their punishment or they asked for forgiveness and they were allowed to come back in the community. Um, we have returnees, we have the bystanders, we have youth, so all these categories are living together in the community. So ERDP, what, what is doing is to put them together. Uh, to be able to sit and you know talk about their issues, their community issues, and look for solutions. So whatever is not resolved, like at their level, while discussing, while in the dialogue, um, we have another program whereby um, they are called like listening sessions. So, so the listening session is whereby, if there is any issue that is discussed and they can't find a solution, it is 
uh, it is t told to, to, the, the, uh, to the local leaders to try and find solutions. And if not, uh, you know, at the, lev the local level, uh, we have another, this project uh, has another uh, program for the national listening session, so to the high level um, of, of leadership, whereby from this, the question, the, the, the challenges, the community challenges are, you know, um, given to, to the government, to the, the officials, the, local, the high level officials of the government to try and find solutions. So what is being done in the community up to now, like what one of these partners like ERDP is doing is, 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 is and it is really impressing me, uh, ten, 10 months ago, you can see how, you know, the, 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 the project is impacting positively. Hmm. It is like the community members. Uh, last time I was on the field, I saw um, uh, two women stood up and I said that you know uh, we have um, we have a gathering for the whole sector. This will be like two thousand people and say that I we we asked as dialogue club members we ask we asked the the, the leaders um, at the sector level to give us time to talk about peace. To, you know, I was so impressed. It was actually not even 10, 10 months. It, is like, it was like five months after, after they, are, they have started that uh, Dado Clubs. So they are really willing to, to contribute. They, they feel like for them, they've, they've moved from point A to B or to, to D or C. Yeah. So they want really to share what they learned from this project. So what they learned actually won from their testimonies in 16 communities where we go, uh, it is like the common testimony that is being given is, is say that we learned to, to, you know, dialogue. Even if you have different opinions, but when we sit together, uh, it is not really necessary that I have the same opinion with you but it can be resolved or someone can have time to understand me and to hear from, you know, from me what, what is my point. And we, of course, find some common understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is like a common testimony that we are, we are being given from the different uh, Dado Club's members. And the Dado Club members, they're having some other initiatives um, like when they have uh, from this project, yeah, they have some um, some like community projects, income generation, but it is shared among them and among the, the community, uh, especially the need very needy people in the community, and it is something that I, I really appreciate because it is their initiative, and they sit together and say, you know what, uh, our neighbor so and so needs like a goat. So then they decide, they say, okay, if your god goat gives birth, you will give it to this one, this one will give to this one. So this is helping in, in reconciliation because they don't look like, you know, he is from this background, he's this, you know, he was like, who is to see his this and this. So this is something that I really appreciate. It is the same as um, another partner that we have, uh, uh, another uh, Karuna partner is, is called Hirok. So Hirok is work is, is really is concentrating in a trauma healing. It is very interesting to see um, like successful stories of what they are doing because basically what they do is um, is about like doing some workshops in the communities. Um, the trauma healing workshops with the communities, like training uh, 30 people, 15, you know, they know how to, to do it. And when they train them, they are aware uh, of what trauma is. Because actually what, what is coming out from those, um, um, those, th th those uh, workshops, they are really testifying that they didn't know that both victims and perpetrators can have trauma. Mm. So that's, just, you know, I was saying that, 
really, if you see the results in very short time, you can be very surprised. So I'm pleased about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand. So it is something that it is really interesting for them to know oh, that reality they didn't know about. And even victims or perpetrators, they didn't know what, the, what was going on in their lives that it is trauma and how to heal. Mm. So that's what they normally do. And uh, another very interesting part of Hirok, um, they, they they train, they train trainers. Mm. <laughs> uh, I mean, they have what they call healing companions. So the healing companions, the they are the the the, the chosen people among the, the ones who were trained, who were tra who had another training, advanced training, to be training others in the community, and you know for the sustainability of this project. They will be helping others, even if the project may be ended, but they will be continuing helping the, 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 the community to overcome those trauma issues. And uh, they actually started with the last um, April morning period, whereby they really helped the community. Because um, when there is commemoration of genocide, we have many cases of traumatized people. So they know how to handle those cases um, whatever at their level when it is maybe too big for them they can direct them to the hospitals but many cases were handled at their levels mm -hmm. um, and i was i was especially struck i mean this is a an amazing piece of work to me also and in in most communities i think there are uh, two healing companions yeah and um, or maybe four by this point, but um, but often a man and a woman. And I was very impressed at the community in which the the people who were selected to be healing companions had a very special story. Um, there was a a woman who had whose family members were killed, and there was a man who was the one who killed them. And they've been living as neighbors for all these years, and now they've moved to a point where they want to be the healing companions together for the people around them. And we have many others. Mm. There are very many. In each community we have successful stories. Uh, I recently followed another you know, uh, testimony whereby um, you know, the members of the, 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 the dialogue club members uh, one of them with another community member was, you know, they said that if I am this community, if I'm this the dialogue club, uh, this is we're working for peace. So my uh, my neighbor didn't know that what I had for them. So I normally hate him. Mm. So I can't, you know. He was, you know, putting in order the numbers of issues that they had. It was a lot. Some were known, others not. But he, you know, started and said that I need to go to him and tell him that this is over. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who started this and it is bad. I have understood with this training we are going through, I've understood the value of peace, value of living peacefully side by side. So he even said that, you know, I will not do this, like, you know, it has to be ceremony. Mm. So we were invited. Mm. <laughs> he said that, you know, I have to, you know, to have some beers and to have some ceremonials. They have, they wear, you know, traditional dress. And he went to that person to ask for forgiveness because he was a, a, a survivor and he had never, you know, asked for forgiveness from his heart. But he said, he decided himself and said, you know, I'm moved, you know, I, I understand, I really understand what, maybe even what she feels. Yeah. And uh, he took that decision to go. And you have many stories actually about <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. how this project helped the communities, especially to know about, you know, to get together and speak their hearts about what is going on, about their issues, sit together and, you know, 
So when they sit together, of course, they have to solve to, to find a solution peacefully. Um, there's another uh, partner called Aegis Trust. Mm. Um, in this pro particular project, they have many projects, but in this particular project, we are working with them uh, on, on youth. They, 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 are, they, are, they are working in the youth project. And um, this is an interesting part also because um, what they are doing is they are doing that, like the peace, uh, the, the peace clubs for the youth, and they are training youth to be youth champions mm. <laughs> in their communities. And it is amazing if you see what they are doing. They are very you know active peace builders in their in, in where they live. They normally train like four in the, in the cell and the four go around and find other youth uh, to work with and there are also others, other youth who were trained by Aegis in this project to, for photography and filming and editing uh, as well and um, they are taking successful stories for the communities. Mm. So most of the, the, the stories will be on YouTube and on other social media and the, the, you know, the stories collected by, by those youth there. And, and actually they are working together with healing companions, with the dialogue club members, and they are really working together uh, to, 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 to convince and to, you know, to talk about peace and to find some successful stories from the community so that they can you know film them and they can ask some questions some interviews then it is going to the uh, genocide memorial center and to this project as well and this will spread you know for 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 for, for the media to know about what is happening and is helping a lot uh, in terms of uh, units and equal reconciliation, uh -huh. it, is really, yeah. it is making progress. And they are also helping, you know, they have some initiatives, building houses for, for the needy people, um, some, you know, they are planting some gardens, you know, vegetable gardens for the, the poor people. They, um, yesterday when I was in the U.S., you know, I've, I was already in the U.S. I read about uh, what the youth champions were doing. Ah. Yeah. Um, so during this commemoration, uh, one of the, the districts, you know, they have, uh, as I put it, f we have 100 days for, for commemoration. But um, so from, from, from April to July. So one of this, um, one of the six um, districts were, you know, commemorating those their time, and the youth champions took lead. Ah, <laughs> wow! You know, now you have to talk one. about how unusual that is. <laughs> so they were the one, you know, to be, you know, give some speech, mm -hmm. you know, saying that how, you know, how to build peace. You know, it was, you know, it was amazing. Some, they have some, they played some sketch, and you know, and it is not even only one because um, the week that I came in the US, in the US, they have uh, one of the, the the youth champions are sharing how um, they they were, you know, together with the army. It was army week, and they were the ones helping the community for you know cleaning, you know, building houses. But they were the ones actually reading, you know. Um, so it is good for youth uh, to understand because when if I go back to the, the the genocide history in Rwanda, they are the youth who destroyed the company, they are the, the, I mean the country, but they are the same ones because they are the ones that you know they, are, they have strength, they are, they are strong people, they have minds, you know, they are the ones also who are constructing the, camp, the, the, the country, and if they are, I mean if they are. They understand their future, or they want a good future of their country. These are great people to work with for peace. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And you were talking about those kitchen gardens and ways that they help uh, poor people. And, and I was remembering when we went to Kirehe. 
Yes. And I wonder if you want to, want to describe what we saw. Uh, what we saw in Kirehe, Kirehe in Rubimba, one mm. of the, the, the communities we are working with, it is in the west, eastern province. Uh, when we went there, it was very interesting to see what youth are doing actually within three, three months of the project. Uh, first of all, they were, they were given, you know, each and every gathering of the sector, they are calling them, those youth, <laughs> you know, for this project. And do you have something to talk about? Wow. So they are always, you know, they are known now as, you know, peace builders. They have always uh, something to say about uh, what they do and what they learn. So that's the first thing they did. They mobilized many youth. And now what they were doing, they were doing the kitchen uh, gardens. Uh, actually, when we went there, we saw more than eight. Mm. In two months, right? In two, two months, almost yeah. three. So it was very interesting to see what they are doing. And they sit together and they say, you know, uh, this Saturday we are doing this. And they go as like 30 or 40 uh, youth, like they, they can do like two, three gardens. And um, not only that, they even constructed, you know, they, they built the, 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 the houses. Mm. For, for the very poor people. Mm. And when we went there, actually we were with USA <laughs> team. <laughs> yeah, we we're very impressed because we, even the, those, the, those um, whose home were built, they were very, you know, uh, happy about that. And there is the lady who has, you know, her child was, was sick, mm. but it was not really any sickness, it was just because the child could not eat mm -hmm. properly, and you know he was left. I think we were told that his uh, the husband was in prison, something like that. And she's really a young lady, and mm. I personally encouraged her to, to you know to, to to go together with those youth and, and you know continue this journey together. But what they did for 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 her really moved her and said, you know, I. She was crying. She said, you know, I don't know how to say thank you so much. You know, my child was going to die. And these are the youth that just saw that and said, you know, we have to help this, this lady. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they, 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 they did, they direct actually needs that of that child. They said, no, instead of like, yes, they used to give her some small money. They put together some small money and to give her but they decided and uh, said that, you know, let's teach her how to do this, how to do this, instead of giving her all the time. But what about like planting these vegetables for her child? So something like that. So these are the youth that are very, really impressive to see what they are doing. And this is actually from the, the, the training that they had yeah. from our project. Yeah. and and. In addition to helping her feed her child going forward, I remember that none of them have jobs, but they found small money to gather enough to take the child to the hospital yes. to help him live. Yeah, and yeah, that's and true. And that was all their spirit. Yeah, that's true. Those kind of initiatives that really yeah. uh, help, is helping this project in peace building. Uh, that shows that it does not need, you know, means, you know, millions of dollars. Mm to do such a great job. And that's actually really what motivates me to do a project like this. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's so amazing to me to see people's spirits come bubbling up and to see youth um, and other people find a sense of purpose that I, I think you've told me and others have told me that many youth in Rwanda are really well educated, mm -hmm. but there's no jobs for them. Yeah, yeah and they feel like hopeless and they're just sitting around wishing that life had more meaning. Yeah. And to see the radiance on their faces when they discover that they actually do have something to contribute yes. and that they can talk at those public meetings, yeah. that they can save the life of this child or help do that. Yeah. And, and it's just thrilling to see them have that feeling. Yes, yes. 
Um, that's, that's also reminds me of uh, our another program we have uh, called intergenerational meetings. Mm. Um, in this program, in, in our project, uh, we have intergenerational meetings and what we call Tubakane days. You know, Tubakane in Kinyarwa, it is the Rwanda name, but saying that let's build each other. Ah. <laughs> so in the, those intergenerational meetings, we uh, youth and you know all the, the beneficiaries of this program, we okay, they are together and they talk about you know uh, issues of generations, you know, youth, some youth problems may not be for adults, but there are some issues, of course, maybe caused by the parents or the, some issues caused by youth to their parents. So in that dialogue, it is not extended among, you know, uh, uh, youth only or older people only, but this project also has another uh, program whereby the two generations meet and we here <laughs> mm. they actually they're the ones who share and say no they even choose one of the topics because this is their needs they say okay like i remember last time um they choose to talk about you know um youth uh, the high, the high high school educated people how, like in the, the rural area, uh, how to you know to get to be involved in in day to day activities of their parents, mm. and you know the debate was very serious. <laughs> 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 but it is good that they came up with recommendations that yeah. will help them. And the good of this project is that they are the ones who find solutions. So what this project uh, like helps them. It is just the techniques, yeah, you know, how people can get together, just a kind of co-facilitation. Mm -hmm. But they are the ones who have solutions, because mm -hmm. we may come from solutions that cannot suit their issues, mm -hmm. their, 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 their problems. So they are the ones who come up with solutions and really and they are the solutions that help them at the community level. Absolutely. And when they're doing that together, you're really talking about them bringing a community back together. Yes, yes. That in all these years, many people have been living side by side because they have to. Yes. But some of what we're doing is helping them come together. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, true. I am so grateful we had a chance to talk about this today. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining <laughs> My pleasure. us. My pleasure. And we thank the viewers for joining Karuna in the world.